dun, the dun, the illest, the illest intro joint. You know what I'm saying? That's right, Shouts that's to right. the homie apologist, the mad Mexican. Apologist. No, I'm just playing with him. He's the, the mad Mexican, though. Him. We call him the angry Mexican. <laughs> That's because hey, we go listen. back, me and him go back three decades, man. I can do that. I can do that. You know what I'm saying? I can do it. For those of you just okay. following the Kirk Kennedy Challenge, every Thursday when we do a cross-examine episode, this counts as one of those posts. But I, but I happen to have the homie, your favorite co-host, with me, yes. Strack the Wolverine. What up? What up? What up? Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we are back to the grill again. The grill again. The grill again. Back to the grill again. The Grill Again, uh, Season yes. 5, Episode 19, man. 19. Yeah, that's yes, my favorite yes, number, yes. man. Man, we that's, got... That's, that's, that's my your favorite joke. number? That's what's up. Yeah, that's 19? my joke, why, yeah. why 19, bro? It was just always on my jerseys. I think when I was a kid, when I played baseball, Jose uh, Juan Gonzalez was like the man down in Texas, Texas Rangers. Is that, is that a, like, I don't his, know baseball numbers. Is that a good his number? His number was 19. Yeah, his number was 19, and he was the man back then. So when I was like 11, 12, so I just always stayed with it. And then when I turned 19... It was one of my favorite years in life, so it That's just it up, kind of stuck with me. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Hopefully, we See, have I, a banging I don't know baseball favorite numbers. episode. Yeah, they, <laughs> right, right, right. You know, what I'm saying there are base, there are numbers that like you know, like in, in basketball, right? The higher mm -hmm. the number, the weirder it is. Like if you see right. like a point guard with like I think that's in all sports right because a quarterback football too yeah yeah football too you don't see yeah. no quarterbacks wearing number like eighty two. That's like a wide no, receiver that's number, that's right? Lineman. Yeah, right. yeah. No, that's, yeah. No, eight, receivers, no, 82, yeah. Yeah, receivers, you're right. Those are receivers. Anything from, I was thinking more midget league, like midget, right, midget right, league right. football. Like, you know, you're throwing the line with number the peewee league, you know right? Yeah. Nah, in, in NFL, in that, that's interesting when we think about it. So you get the the zero to like the the 20s, right? That's going to be your quarterbacks and some of your like wide receiver and special teams, right? Yeah. And then you get in the 30s and all of that, and that's your special team. Running backs. You know, some running backs in that that, mm -hmm. that field in the 20s and Great 30s. Great Walter Payton, 34. Right. Yeah. 20s and 30s are like running backs and like special teams. You don't see that many 40s. Sometimes 40s are like tight ends, you know. Yeah. You might have something like that. 19 was my joint, though, man. That's my, my, that's brother. my joint. Yeah, but yeah. then 50s and yeah. 60s are usually like linemen, right? Yeah. Those be like the O-line, D-line. And then when you get in the 70s and, like, the 90s, those would be, like, the defensive ends and and the D-backs. But then you get the 80s, that's usually receivers in football. Right. And then basketball, it's like, you know, the lower the numbers, like the point guard, you know. I mean, when Greg Anthony, still... Greg Anthony had 50, and that was, like, weird to see a point guard wearing number 50. Okay. Yeah, because, like... like Roberto Clemente right behind me, he was 21. Oh, was he? You know what I mean? So they... Yeah. It's the numbers in baseball is all over the place. I numbers, think. numbers, numbers, numbers. That's crazy. Numbers. Man. Well, we got a crazy show for y'all today, man. We just gonna do one of them. We got a couple things on as percolating right now, so yes. we are gonna jump into to some of that. We appreciate y'all. We know we started a little bit late tonight. You know what I'm saying? Turn out the lights. Let the light it can do. We starting a little bit late tonight, but that's all right, man. We're gonna get we got a couple things to talk about, man. We're gonna jump in because we know it's late. Some let's of y'all are early birds and you need let's to catch it. the worm. All right, so let's jump into this story here. Bud Light gets dark. All right, last week Strack and I did our episode, and a lot of it was on Dylan Mulvaney, who is of the sexual acronym community. He's in the yes. T, the trans. And and Bud Light gave him an endorsement deal, and since then Bud Light has received a ton of backlash. So what we're going to do is, you know, we're not we're not on that tip yet. We're just going to jump in to the to the way we do it. But I'm going to play. You know, this there up. was a there was a whip real quick back real quick. There was a whip back in the day called the Trans Zam. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And the joke was kind of fly, but I, I didn't, what I didn't like about it was that it was a a copy to me of the Camaro. It was, right? You know what I'm yeah. saying? It so was. It's like a good call. You had the Camaro and mm -hmm. you had the Trans Am wasn't the real joint. You know right. what I'm saying? I ain't bang with it all like that because right. of that. So just had to throw that and in so there. So you thinking that's, was that prophetic? You feel like that became a prophetic thing? I mean, you? you know, you know, you know. Yeah. It's just I think Trans Am, you know. When life G imitating art. Right. Before Abraham was, I am. So I think a Trans Am is just people thinking that God is trans. Okay. Yeek! Nope. All right, here we go. 
So that here is the. Uh, I want to give you this this quick. So here's an update on Bud Light. Here we go. Dylan Mulvaney uh, was on the cover. Was on a Bud Light can, like a commemorative six pack. It was mailed to Dylan. There was a brand partnership. And Bud Light used Dylan to promote Bud Light and all health news. They've lost some seven billion dollars in market capitalization. Top of their polling about that. Top of the show. Sales are plummeting, according to what we read. And the core base is mad. They're mad at Bud Light. They don't. They don't appreciate this partnership. Now, Daily Wire reached out to, they say, two sources um, within Bud Light who are in a position to know, and they say to the Daily Wire, no one at a senior level was aware of this partnership. <laughs> no one at a senior level. Now, the person who wow. we thought approved it is the VP of Marketing, Alyssa Heinerscheid. And if Alyssa did not specifically approve this ad, shame on her. It's still her problem. It's her department. She allowed it, and she was on the air three days before the campaign hit talking about how we've gotten too fratty and we need to be more inclusive. And look at this Super Bowl ad I did, which is about a male actor. But it was told through the what his through his wife's eyes. She was the heart and soul. Oh uh, right. I don't Megan Kelly, she needs to Yeah, we're so we so high tech out here, man. Yeah, we're like so that's how we do it, tech. baby. We can switch you know it up, saying? but I'm not ready yet. When we get to five K, <laughs> we gonna give y'all that work. All right. High tech and quality. So what? Bud Light loses seven billion dollars since Crazy. this campaign started because it Crazy. mocked its original audience. Now, Strack, I'm not trying to say I told you so. But I remember but you did say it. distinctly saying, let's see how Bud Light responds. Because yep. if they drop this campaign, then to me, it proved this is about capitalism and not conviction of trans rights. Yeah. And I feel like I was right. I think you were, my friend. Yeah, I, th this, honestly, bro, this is what I think, man. I think there is a degree in which we could say that there is spiritual warfare. We do not wrestle with flesh and blood, right? But it gets the principalities, powers, rulers of this age. We get that. So there is a degree mm -hmm. in which, you know, the enemy is working behind the scenes through people to accomplish a purpose of not giving in to the glory of Jesus, right? So that part, I right. always recognize that. But what I think drives America, and I think this is, I mean, we've talked about this before, but I'll say this for now. America's the reality of America and capitalism, which I don't have a problem with capital. I don't think any ism honors the Lord more than the other. I think it just it just I think what each ism does determines who has the best motive for greed, the best potential for greed. So when like socialism, it's a group the government has the best potential for greed, and communism is similar. Capitalism is just private industry. The people that own it have the best in but so it just it makes greed more normalized because more people can be can own and, and have their and set their own rules, so to speak. So, but I think more people can greedy. be greedy. More, more people, people can be can greedy. Be is greedy. what I'm getting at. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, the it, other it, yeah. yeah the other situations you have one tyrannical ruler. He's right. the greedy guy. Right. In our situation, everybody can be. Everybody's greedy. Well, greedy. A lot Scarface. of people can be greedy. Everyone is greed or whatever it is. Right. 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 What, what right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. But the thing is, I think people don't realize this about America. I think, you know, we talk about, like, the original sins of America being racism and all these different things. I personally think that stuff is just whack. I don't think that's true. I think America's original sin is mammon over the Messiah. I think it's greed. It's consumerism. It's greed. It's, it's about money. Because if you think about what slavery was, it was an economic decision. It was... Oh, yeah. Okay, we brought poor whites over here to work the land. They couldn't do it. We tried to get Indians. They couldn't do it. Let's get Africans from the transit because they've been they've been doing it for hundreds of years. It was an economic it was a financial decision. infrastructure. It was a financial was infrastructure. infrastructure decision. That's what it was. For sure. And then when you look at yeah. Jim Crow, what was Jim Crow? Jim Crow was an economic sanctions. It was sanctions against black people because we're offended that we no longer can make money off of you. It's always been about the color green. The most racist color is green. So capitalism drives behind a lot of what America stands for and money, the desire for money. What, and even America, the American dream is what? You can come here and, and hit it big and provide for your family, right? 
Right. You come to, so people come from other countries not because America's air is better, water is better, grass is better. Maybe some people come from some of those things. But most people come for the financial, potential financial opportunities. So in our country, what drives conviction for many people is commerce. For believers, what drives conviction should be Christ. But conviction, and so what we see in these, all this push for, they're only doing it because they think it's good for business. How can you get a campaign like that out there and no one knew that it was out there? Even though the VP, as it, as it was said, the girl... No one in the name. senior office. The, no yeah, one from the senior, senior office. office. How do That's you wild. make that decision? The, the lady came out three days before the ad talking about what, what's going to happen, and then you find out it's this, it's this guy Dylan Mulvaney, right? Right. And then they pull the plug. Why did they pull the plug? Because they got... I bet you they wouldn't have pulled the plug if they got $7 billion surplus. There's no way they you would. You know what? You know what was odd? It, the video did look super low quality. Like, it didn't look like something that... joint did look low would... budget. It looked like, like how we right. do joints, right? Right. It didn't look like the epic Budweiser commercials. You know what I'm saying? So, that that does make me wonder who was involved. What was involved in this process? It was somebody just kind of tiptoeing in to see what they could get away with and what Budweiser would jump on board with, or... What the freak happened there, man? That joint is super weird. Wines. It wasn't. Ugh. Yeah, who knows how it got there, but I know, I guarantee you, had their sales went up, they wouldn't have pulled this. Nah, there's not, they would have went with a full campaign. 100%. There's not a convi yeah. Listen, brothers and sisters, if you're watching this, if you're of the Christian tradition like Strack and myself, don't be fooled by all this shucking and jiving about the Democrats all have corporate lobbyists that are trying to get get influence Congress with millions of dollars in donations to pass laws that help their corporation make money and hustle us. And the Republicans do the same thing. Don't let them right. fool you. There may be some differences in policy, 100%, but they're all capitalists and they all want to figure out how can we get money and other and, and we and us not get it. So when these Thanks. companies are backing, when they're allies of, of LGBTQIA+, division sign, exclamation point, they're, they're, it's only because they think it'll earn them money. These people aren't doing it out of conviction. They're doing it out of commerce. And so now Bud Light gets hit I mean, in the face, and now it's like, hey, we don't know who did this. We're pulling the campaign. Right. But Dylan Mulvaney wins. Gonna go, he wins. Yeah, for sure. He definitely... He's more famous. More yeah. people know about him now. He's more more people checking wins. out his videos. He got yeah. more followers. He wins. For, for sure. He's definitely... I was just wondering, like, when you said about the, the, the founding sin or the the groundwork of sin in America was greed. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, greed comes... It, it, so it's money, power, respect, right? Right. Money, power, respect. Like, right. I mean, we can take it to hip-hop. Right. So when you got the money, you got the control. So that's really Man, is I it wish is we could it play is music it music like we used to, bro? Uh, no, is it is I it the financial aspect? Yeah. The, go ahead. I appreciate but, YouTube or, trying to make sure that people get paid, but man, for I sure, wish we could play music sure. like we used to. Yeah, money, power, respect. You need need life, life. Like, money, power. Respect. So yeah, I, I wonder, you know, the groundwork of it meaning um, is it just a control aspect? They want power. They want control. I mean, even. You know, the ones that have all the money, they'll tell you, like, what is money? Money's nothing. Only because it's they the have power. It. Yeah. It's the power. True. You know what I'm saying? It really is what they hold on to, cling to, and don't want to let go of. Yeah. Well, money gets you power. I mean, think about this. Now, right, right. obviously, Strack, we're not the Lord, and we don't know. But even if anyone listening, figure, let me know this. What country in the history of the world was ever run by the poorest people in the country? Like, what country in the history of the world was run by the poorest people in the country instead of the richest? Haiti, when they took over. When they took <laughs> that's, over, that's right? What, yeah, when they took but over. But they didn't stay poor. It. it was poor only because, you know. Nah, they, was, those who took over became rich Became overnight. rich, right? Yeah, you don't, for sure. You don't run the country. So, on one level, it's always about, comp but you're right, it's about power. What And, th and think about, them. excuse me, what, what does celebrity do? Like, celebrities... They have what's 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 attractive to a celebrity is more about power than money, because we think yeah, we sure. we see people 
and people freak out, and you don't even know how much money they have. Now we assume, and their power comes through influence. Their power, right? It's influence, right? Their power yeah. comes through whatever creative thing that they do to entertain us, right? So yeah, if you're an sure. actor, then you're then we we give you if you're a ball player, if you're a rapper, if you're a singer, whatever it is, your influence gives you power, and then and mm -hmm. then we assume we ascribe money and all that stuff. But a lot of uh, uh, America's issue. It is power, but the way there is money. It's money. Right. But but even then, though, I mean, we've mentioned this before. I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole with this because we're going elsewhere. But if you really mm -hmm. think about it, what really people really want to control is is power to do what, though? What do you want to do with power? People have want power to control morality. Yes. Let me tell you why. This is a, the richest people in the world, right? The richest companies, like they... You know, Tim Cook at Apple, uh, the guy who runs Google, uh, Google and brothers, uh, the richest people, Mark Zuckerberg, they still have to sit in front of who? Congress. The judge. They have to sit sure. in front of people who make the laws. And, yeah. and, and essentially, what do laws represent in America? A morality. They represent yeah. the moral compass of the American people. Even if we don't agree with all the laws and all of it, there are a lot of laws that all of us agree with. They, they're in place, right? So the real issue is to control morality. Money gives you power, and power gives you influence to sway what morality looks like, what it looks like. So this yes. is why in the Old Testament, when the kings were evil, the kings were evil, it influenced the people, right? This is what you got. You got in Israel, there were 20 kings in the northern kingdom, 19 in the southern kingdom. There were six kings in the southern kingdom that were good, but only three of them were good cover to cover, right? One of them, right. Some, two of them started off good, became bad. One started off bad and became good when he died, right? So, it, so what we're talking about is really the money and the power to influence morality. But that's where yeah. Congress is huge. That's why they get all the corporate lobbying, all this stuff, because the companies want them to legislate a moral compass that allows them to make more money and, and exert more power and influence. They still need that from people. So, but that's a, you know, that's a, that's a little too deep for where we y'all trying to go tonight. <laughs> but we just want to talk yeah. about, so Bud Light, Bud Light gets dark, right? Bud Light is on the verge. I'm, 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 I'm encouraged, man. And let me tell you why. And let me say this and then we're going, because one of the things that I think that within the trans community, um, and I'm saying this because, you know, I got demonetized on YouTube. They took away my, I think it was because of one of the episodes where we was just going. Really? In. Yeah, I got demonetized. I got to reapply. So I was like, I ain't tripping. I'm not even going to reapply right now. I'm just going to try to build the channel up. But I got demonetized by YouTube. All of a sudden, wow. I was like, where's all the, and I went and clicked on it. It was like, oh, register. I was like, I was already, packed. so they're going to do it so that I can apply for, for that again. And then they say, we're going to deny you because of this claim or whatever. So I'm not even tripping. Content, yeah. yeah, I'm not even tripping. There's something that they didn't like about what I've said. And they can do that to me because I'm a little guy. They don't demonetize like the Daily Wire who got 5.5 million subscribers. They don't demonetize all these other big corporations that say trans is a lie and all this stuff. But they get mad at me. So I'm demonetized. So if you want to support your boy, look in, the, look, in the, look in the section of where this show is. You got the Cash App, Venmo, all that Patreon. They trying to shut your boy down. They're trying to yeah, shut us they down. Trying to, they trying to demonetize. You know yeah, de 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 right. Demonetize, right? Demonetize. But anyway, all I have to say, one of the things <laughs> that I'm actually grateful for about all of this is because, you know, the trans community, they're going to lose their war and it's going to be their fault. Let me tell you why. We recently heard about the girl, uh, Riley. Um, uh, her, name is, um, her name is escaping me. Riley something, um, but she was attacked. She's a she was a swimmer who pushed back. Mm -hmm. Swimmer from Kentucky, I believe, who pushed back against she's you know against trans being in women's sports. And she was in San Francisco last week, and she was attacked. She was hit a couple times in the face by a trans woman, and then was and then, by, and, a and the tra by a trans woman it was a dude, and then right, all dude. these yeah. people had to. Um, hide her in a back room for over three hours because trans dude activists was still were, trying to get her yeah and trans activists were saying like holding up sign wow, it was, so it was, was video it was videotaped you could see this on video right so i think strike will be right back 
in the second. He got disconnected, I think. That's why he's looking at, looking like he just like 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 some like some like he just found out he won a couple of dollars. So like they they basically attacked this. They attacked her, right? And so <laughs> they you was like this. Yeah, no. Your face is froze. <laughs> so they attacked her physically, and that's why they're going to lose. Is because here's what I will say about the lesbians and, and the gay of the LGBT. They didn't attack people as much. They 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 talked about how they were being attacked, and they won people differently. But trans people are so demanding that people submit to their ideology that they're physically hitting you. That's not going to fly, fam. That's not going to fly. And when you hit a good old American white girl like Riley, whatever her last name is, people aren't going for that. And right. I think I think this campaign with Bud Light, I think people are starting to really. I think we're realizing, like, oh, th this many people ain't on this like they thought it was. These people are no one's no one's tripping off of them. So, yeah. so Bud Light has copped the plea, and now they are saying we're going to pull the campaign. But it's all but don't don't be fooled by that. That's not some a measure of conviction or standing. It's because we just lost seven more billion dollars in a week. That's right. Yeah. That's why. Well, our Bud country Light is about to shut it down. What well, our country makes decisions based on commerce more than it does conviction. Believe that. All right. Next story. Breaking news. Breaking news. Maverick City Music supposedly wants to do secular music. And some people are flipping out. So this is going to be an interesting conversation. Because, Strack, me and you have particular opinions on music. We're rappers. We yes, we care yes. about music and we care about craft and representation and all that. And we're a little bit different in our what our content to some degree. You know, I would mm -hmm. hit things. We're a little bit different, but but we, we care about content and all that. So apparently the Chandler Moore, who is, uh, you know, the face essentially of Maverick Music, he put out a TikTok video and he essentially said this that Maverick Music is going to, Maverick City is going to start doing music that doesn't do, only and always talk about their relationship with God, your relationship with God. And he quoted, not from, but just quoted the fact that in the Bible, like a book like Song of Solomon, isn't necessarily about your relationship with God, but about love, about sex between the husband and wife and stuff like that. So he was saying that even in the Bible, there are stories and narratives and different things that aren't always directly tied to worshiping God and all of that. So what it sounds like is that Maverick City Music is wanting to be musician, Christians who make music and not uh, Christian. So it's kind of happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This Again, is great. I, I'm only going off of what was said. I don't know what their intent is, but this is what it sounds like to me. It sounds like Lecrae, a la, via, you know, circa 2011, <laughs> where I'm just a rapper. I'm a Christian that raps, not a Christian rapper. And so yes. it's like, here we go again, right? So Maverick City, and Ma I like their music, man. I sing, we sing yeah. some of their songs on They Sunday got some morning. dope music. They, they make good music. music, man. I love Maverick City music, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I'm looking at the Spotify account and yeah. I'm seeing like I mean obviously there's like from 2019 there's more than 10 albums there's probably like 20 or something like that it's just since 2019 so 2019 2020 21 and 2022 they got like 15 plus projects and it took them that long to figure out that the Bible talks more about other stuff like yeah, bro. I ain't buying it bro yeah, yeah. I'm not, got, I don't got enough money in the bank to buy that man I'm not know. buying it, fam. Like, it's obvious. They just won, like, awards this year. They, they're getting recognized by more people. In my opinion, they just want they just want to broaden their horizons as far as music is concerned. They want to reach more people. They want to make more money. You know what I mean? So it's let me like, ask you this. Do you think that's a problem? Like, do you find issue with that? If Let's assume that that's true. We yeah. don't know. We're not them. We weren't in the meetings. We weren't there. But if that's true... Do you find issue with that? I, I mean, I, I could find issue with it. It just depends. Like, I mean, I don't uh, just the information that I have offhand. I, I don't care. I just think it's kind of weird the way they're going about it. Like, if you if you want to make music that's not necessarily Christ centric 
all the time, right. then then do it and just right. see how your fans appreciate it and see what happens. This whole announcement aspect is kind of like, I don't know, it just seems odd. It just doesn't seem, mm-hmm. it doesn't have a good vibe about it. You know what I'm saying? Well, what, do you, what do you think is like, when you say it seems odd, like what are you getting at? What does that mean? Because it there, there seems like they're having to excuse it for some reason. Why are you excusing what you're about to start doing before you even start doing it? Why are you giving a biblical reason for it before you even start doing it? What's going on in the background is what I want to know. Like, Because if you're already set upon it, I know they're major in music. So they got like a lot of people behind yeah, what they're Spotify's doing. That's probably crazy. You know what I mean? They got a lot of people behind what they're doing. Yeah. So I already know this is something that's been in the works for a minute. This ain't just something you just pop off all of a sudden. Like, I just don't, I don't buy it. I don't bang with it. Like, do I find anything wrong with the desire to, you know, spread and, and reach more people and make more music and get more fans? Nah, if that's what you do for your business, that's how you make your ends and you talented, do that. You know what I'm saying? But I, I guess I take issue with uh, finding your persona one way and then making an announcement that you're going to switch and do something else. Why is there announcements going on? Like this so Let me is play devil's who... advocate a little bit. Okay. Well, maybe not devil's advocate because this isn't really a counter position. I think the reason why they may do that is because they have a lot of influence. And if they just switch it up, people would be like, what's going on? People will just be like, what? So I think they're saying that so that they can prepare the people that have supported them that we're going to do something a little bit different. That makes me going. think that makes me think how drastic is this change going to be? Like how far That's are y'all going? Question. You know what I'm That's saying? Because if if it's going to be that noticeable, then what, you're just not even going to uh, attribute what you do to God anymore at all? Like, what's well, the difference well, going to be? on one level, so I think that is a good question. I think that's the question. I think on one level, it could be that, you know, Christians, we're also very, um, we're very scarlet letterish, right? So For sure. We, so we kind of have this way that we think things should be done. And if you deviate scarlet letter, you're not doing it the way you should, like, the only kind of music you should do is this kind of music and and or you can only do you know like there's a lot of for and i mean we we can go into the weeds with this one but if you think about what it means to be a christian right you look at the scriptures right jesus never told anyone except for well never told anyone like levi didn't he never told him to leave being a tax collector he just said be honest when you do it right Mm -hmm. the roman centurion wasn't told to leave his being a roman centurion the philippian jailer as far as we know was still a philippian jailer when he put i mean he put paul and barnabas back into the prison right when they got released the next morning first corinthians 7 talks about wherever you are stay there right so obviously if you're working in the pornography industry get to stepping martin lawrence told for sure but but i think there is a lot of pressure on Christian musicians in particular. And it is because our music is, is oral and our words and there's an intrinsic nature to music. There mm-hmm. is a, a pressure on that particular art form, whether it's singing or rapping, to to be explicit. When you can be, we, there's godly Christian basketball, baseball, plumbers, lawyers. I mean, there's, you know, but for some reason, with music, it has to be in everyone's face, and everyone has to know. And that's how some Christians feel about that. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I don't, I don't know if that's true biblically, but I know that that can happen. So they might be speaking up because they're aware of the scarlet letterish type believers who get used to something, and then when you switch it up, they, they're like, they're after, they're after you. That might be sure. what happened. And I mean, I know Lecrae. <laughs> Lecrae, he did his. He said he messed it up the way he did it. He just totally messed it up, and and I think in hindsight, he was not as genuine with what he was doing initially, because it, he ended up confessing that he, did, you know, he almost walked away completely from the faith. I mean, he was really struggling, and so, so I, you know, I don't, I don't know what their music's going to sound like, mm-hmm. but I don't, I don't know if just because you define yourself particular music style that you have to always do that but i do think it depends like you said man what's the music going to be because i think you have bread so here's where i have issue and this might not be what they're doing i have issue with this you brand yourself something and create an audience in the church 
a huge audience. And then you leave the church, almost like. Now, I'm not saying they're leaving the church. I don't know what their music is going to sound like. Uh, but it's almost like I may. And this is this was my issue with Lecrae, ultimate right. big picture. Bro, you 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 created, you you were born from the church. You your yeah. music came from the church. You you we the, the church was the one that supported you. And even yeah. when you switched up, they supported you until you started to go real hard. And when you signed right. with Columbia Records and dropped that album, that joint well, flopped. It sold like eleven thousand copies. When right. the previous album sold over a hundred thousand, they were like, mm -hmm. "Oh, this dude!" But that was because the church was buying that, not the world. Right, and that's and the he, issue. Right, and so all that to say, I hate when people do that. I don't mm -hmm. mind if you want to switch up a little bit. But it depends on what you're switching up to, what you're trying to do, what's the music going to be like. If you're just going to yeah. walk away from the Lord and all the people who bought you, because we're still going to follow you at first. Your music affected us. But what are we doing now? Are we in the club? Are we doing remixes with Beyonce? Like, what are we doing? Right. I, I just don't know what the music will be like, which will be interesting and to me. Is the music going to still be for the same fan base that they've done developed and grown? Right. You know what I'm that's, saying? that's huge. Is the music still for them? Plus, you have to consider the fact that this music is not just something that's listened to for entertainment for most right. people who listen to this yeah, music. It's worship. Most people that listen to this music equate it with their relationship with God. So they when they go to prayer, when they go to, you know, worship sessions, this music is playing. Like when they want to start their day at work to feel good about their day, this music is playing. Like we got a worker at the restaurant. She gets to the restaurant, the first thing she does, she puts Maverick City music on the Echo. And she's banging it while she's prepping for the day. You know what I'm saying? Because she wants to set her day in an atmosphere of worship. So That's what do you say? It. Okay, so what do you so let's 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 play Jay let Jay Z be devil advocate, right? You want the old Jay Z buy my old albums. Like what do you say uh -huh. to people if they say, Cool, man, continue to play those worship albums. Like we're not pulling those out. We just right. our newer music is going in a different direction. We ain't saying you can still bang them joints. Like why do yeah. like in other words, why do we have to keep making new worship music for you? Shoot, we've been singing hymns for hundreds of years. Yeah, yeah. I'm you know, not saying I, they have to. I'm yeah, not saying yeah, they I'm have to. I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying that's where I'm trying to see, like, for the person right. who feels like that. Yeah, I just think that I think it does send mixed signals at the yeah. same time. Yeah. You know, what I mean, it does. It does kind of mess up things a little bit because, I mean, start another band. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, take Maverick City, start another band. Hey, this is our but, band for but, this kind of music. But that's where, yeah. again, I think you're on to something that you said about five minutes ago, that there's a brand. They've made a lot of people right. know, Matt. If you start all over, they might not know who that is. Right. Like, you got to really be into Maverick City to know who Chandler Moore is. And you're into Maverick City because you're into worshiping God. Mm -hmm. Here's what's it now. Here's what's interesting, though. and again, we ha I haven't investigated. I might I might investigate this and do one of my uh, day day whatever of a hundred joints, because here's what's interesting to me. Remember the other dude Dante uh, whatever he left Maverick City. No, I don't first of all, that. he got disciplined and put out of Maverick City, and then it was like and stuff was just coming out. I find it interesting. I need to hit Jerusalem. Let me hit Jerusalem. And hit him and tell him he'll do the research and figure out what's really going on. I need to hit him because this is an interesting development. Now you think about the guy Dante last year who was put out of Dante Bo. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Dante Bo. He was put out of Maverick City for some character issues apparently, and then said he wasn't coming back. All this stuff, and now they're they they sound like they're making a shift in them. Interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. interesting. So the industry we, is interesting as a whole, man. It is. Now we've never talked about this individual. Someone asked this this question. Said NF kind of did the same thing too, but in his latest album, it almost sounded like he is back to talking about God. <laughs> so I want to get your thoughts. Now, now we're they're in our field. We're rappers, but but right. I do have to. I'm asking you, and you might be like, you might say the same thing I'm about to say. Uh, in all seriousness, I've never really listened to NF. Right. When he first came out. I just thought it's he's just trying to sound like Eminem. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure people would say, well, no, he has his own thing. But to me, it was just too much like Eminem. It was the mm -hmm. same vibe, the dark hoodie. Like, I had problems with my mom. You know, it was just a lot of the same angles that Eminem took. And, and, and I'm going to say this. I'm not trying to offend anybody. But it was just like 
there are certain problems. Like when Eminem came out, here's what was different about Eminem. First, he could spit. He was crazy spit, right? Mm-hmm. But the Eminem's content were what we call white boy problems, like white people problems. Like <laughs> Eminem's talking about, like, you know, my mom didn't do this and my dad and black people ain't, we, you know, we, we talk about our dads and stuff like that, but we just talk about deeper social, you know, sociological issues in the black. Like he was talking about my mom was this and the, and Kim and I hated Kim and you're, you know, half your music is making fun of NSYNC and, and Britney Spears and all that stuff. And like, that's the stuff that black people, we don't relate to that, right? So one of the things that Eminem did was he essentially. I think he was actually making fun of white people. Most he of the was, time, but, but that was his wrong. angle. But he, but he, but he presented his struggles that white people could relate to. Yeah. See, for, but before that, white people were living vicariously through. I mean, you white driving around pumping Wu Tang Clan. Right. I mean, how you you know you you grew up in the suburbs. You ride around cash rules everything around me. Cream get the money. Dollar dollar <laughs> bill, y'all. <laughs> You can't My homie said almost because he's a white boy and he he don't get down like that. Yeah, he, he, he MC profound. Oh, he yeah, was yeah, like yeah. he was like almost. Almost right, 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 <laughs> right, right, right. So again, like you just you can't relate to that, right? You know. So, mm-hmm. but then Eminem comes out and it's like you know I got problems. My mom did this and my wife and. My, you know, it was like problems that, you know, okay, yeah, that's problems that can relate to the largest. I thought M's first album was crazy. I couldn't relate to it at all. But, you know, putting needles in the yeah. eyeballs and all of that stuff. But I thought right. the joint creatively and artistically was bananas. Well, it was, because it was just unique. I mean, I love yeah. the Eminem Dr. show. Drake. I mean, the Eminem show is one of my, it's in my top 10 favorite albums of all time. Yeah. And that's saying a lot because there's a lot of albums. M, so the Eminem M- show was in my top 10. I loved that album when it came. So with NF, I did listen to NF, okay. uh, especially when he first came out. I figured you did. That's um, why I said this is a you question. Yeah, I definitely listened to him. Um, actually, one of the things that got me put on to him, he was in a video game joint, and um, like he was just rapping on the video game. My son was like, yo, dad, he's a Christian. So I started diving in and kind of checking him out because you know a lot of kids at that age were getting into NF, you know, and I knew um, I had heard like some of his music is kind of dark. And then vibe, so I started checking. And the dude is talented, man. I mean, his, his music is kind of dope. He got major label backing from the from the door, like early on. He got it. Um, so he's been producing good quality quality music. You know what I'm saying? Like not necessarily appealing to all like what we bang with, but it's quality. You know what I mean? And um, he definitely has that dark uh, overtones to his music. Like yeah, sad definitely. life is sad, life is hard. Yeah. Um, and one of the critiques that I always had was there wasn't really a deliverance message. There wasn't like a, a way out. There wasn't there was the a hope, hope that right? the yeah. hope that we have in Christ. You know what I mean? And he was he was claiming to be a Christian. Um, w- but the problem that I have with NF is not necessarily his transition in music or his back and forth with music or whatever the case may be. It's more the interview aspect, which is really what the issue that I had with Lecrae, aside from some of the features he was doing. Mm, oh, okay. That's but, a good, oh, go, go with it. I like this. That's a good point. Yeah, so it's more the interviews. It's more like when you're seeing the person for who they are in discussion with someone who's asking them about themselves. They, they want the world to know who this person is. And the person has an opportunity to present themselves, and they don't sound like they read their Bibles at all. Like, they don't sound like if they're proclaiming to be Christians... It's definitely not what they want to give off to people when they when they talk. Yeah. You know, what they want to give off is that they're creatives, um, that they do believe in God. God is cool because, you know, their parents taught them to love God and to believe in God. Um, but, you know, they're just trying to live life and learn things. And, you know, it's like God is like a like, the you know, the fanny pack. You know what I'm saying? Like you mm-hmm. got him with you. You know what I'm saying? But he's he's more of a uh, an accessory. You know what I mean? That's what it kind of seems like. And I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not saying that these dudes aren't Christians. You just right. don't see it in the interviews. Right. It's just odd. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. the way, with, with the way that they speak about the church. I mean, you could almost hear Christ say, why are you persecuting me? You know what I mean? Like, that's some of the ways that they talk. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's mainly what my issue was with NF. His transition musically, he kind of knew it was coming. Like, right. he was starting to dive in and make music with other people, and he was already a major label dude. Mm-hmm. So, it was going to happen. You know, and, I, and again, I'm not a follower of him, so this could be a wrong assessment, but I'll say this because I just like to hear myself talk. No, I'm just saying. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> now this is the show. I got to talk. Right? What we're doing. But I, I just wonder if, you know, similar to Lecrae, I wonder if these returns back to God, right, 
And I'm not saying like he's not a Christian. I'm saying just the the return back to God. I wonder if it, how much that's connected to maybe the drop in sales. Like all of a sudden when Lecrae, I thought Lecrae got humbled. He had signed with Columbia. Yeah. Columbia, it was a major label. His first major label album was a dud. And it was because the ch by that point, you had said enough about the church that Christians were like, man, I ain't backing this dude no more. At least a, a good amount. A good yeah, amount. For I mean, sure. you can't sell over 100000 the album before and then sell right. 15000 and it not be. You re he realized it was the church. And I yeah. think a lot of the, the pre all that stuff came because that was a big deal. And then he's back to just reach records. You know, you got dropped by Columbia. And so. I think a lot, I wanted so much of that returning back home, that 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 sense of, you know, is, is due to, I don't know, I'm saying this because I don't know NF's record sales, but I wonder I tell you if what, with, the brand of NF is starting to fade and now it's like, you know what, let me go back to my faith and my roots and make music and get supported there. Is that what's going on? I don't I, know I don't because know. I don't oh, okay. know his trajectory. I, I don't listen to NF. Okay. I've heard him and I think he can spit, but I just think it sounds like Eminem to me. And I don't mind... You know, I would, being influenced by an artist, but I hate when you, I feel like the cadence and everything, content, the, the delivery of NF was too Eminem for me, and so I was like, nah, I just ain't vibe with it. You know, um, I wonder, like, it would be dope to ask Kanye, uh, if we could ask Kanye, the great business mind that Kanye is, he dropped Jesus is King, the record sales was through the roof, obviously, because it was Kanye, but, I mean, the content was very Christian, very Christian. So, you know, the church was involved. And I just wonder how that swayed, you know what I'm saying, and as far as, like, a secular artist now dropping a Christian album. It's the opposite of Lecrae. Clearly, Kanye is not nearly as big as Lecrae. I mean, Lecrae is not nearly as big as Kanye. But still, it just, it just, it'd be interesting, you know, from that dynamic to view it, like, the financial aspect of things. With the yeah, content. who knows? I mean, Kanye is Kanye, right? I mean, Kanye made Jesus yeah. walks just because they said, he wanted to prove that he could make a song and get it on the radio that talks about Jesus. That's right. Yeah. So and I think did. I personally think because Kanye felt like he's the basically like the the uh, vicar of the Son of God almost. I think he'd be talking he, like that. Yeah. yeah, I think he kind of felt like. Uh, speaking of which, I got a song called "What Happened to Kanye" coming soon. Y'all going it's going to touch y'all a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but I I think. I think he felt like, man, I can do this because I'm Kanye, and it wasn't the same vibe as like right. Lecrae, right? Because Lecrae, because it, because I think the shock of it was it's Kanye. Yeah. Now I want to hear what he does on the Christian tip. Like, what's this going to sound like? I think it was more that, you know, because right. it did. Even though, because Donda wasn't like that, it didn't have the same. Let's be but clear. the shock didn't work on the other side for Lecrae. Like people weren't like, "Oh, I wonder what he's going to do now that he's doing secular." You know what I'm saying? Well, like, the shock didn't you, work. But but I think you should. I mean, I'm sure you know that when yeah. you're a Christian, though, people are you. You don't get the same love. Like this is mm -hmm. Kanye coming from the world convert, and people like I want that old Kanye, that in the soul Kanye, that in the. So I think there's a sense where people want it because he's a superstar. I mean, he's up there. You know, some people put him on their route, Mount Rushmore. You do a whole album with Jay Z, it's like you that dude. So I could see why people wanted to know what he was going to do, but mm -hmm. eventually, as they realize this dude really thinks he's a Christian, they stop. They stop messing with him. With right. Lecrae, you're a Christian. You come into the world they're like, man, we ain't trying to hear that. We don't want to hear that right. Sharif. You know. Right. So I just think that's that's why that that happened. But it, you know, interesting, man. It's, it's 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 the music thing is always interesting because when you do music as a Christian. It's challenging in this way. Art a lot is, of Christians, art, yeah, the art. A lot of Christians yeah, art prefer. As a whole. Art, what'd you say? I was just gonna say art as a whole. I Christian think. art, I think creative really. expression. Christian creative creatives. Expression. Yeah. I think it can be challenging. Yeah. The best thing, the most effective Christian creatives often become like YouTube channel people. Like they got a YouTube channel, a couple hundred thousand people listening to them. But it's hard to make music or things like that because. A lot of Christians prefer the secular side of it. Like we don't, we don't, they don't, we don't give the Christian music unless it's worship. Like we want to hear worship, but we sometimes don't give artists the chance unless you're super popular, or it's we just kind of we'd rather hear secular if if we're into that kind of music, you know. Or Christians just want to hear worship. They don't want to hear. So I just think it can be tough as a Christian 
So I can see why people are like, hey, man, I do music. Like, listen, just because you do it for Jesus doesn't mean you don't want to be heard or don't want to get paid for it. Right. Like, it's not like doing it for Jesus means like, hey, man, just do free shows and who cares it's for the Lord. It's like, no, you want people. It's like us with this channel, right? I want to grow the YouTube channel, but I don't. So, like, they demonetize me. It's not like they're hurting my livelihood. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to grow the channel just because I want to be. No, you want to influence. You want people to hear some of your perspectives. You think you have something to offer, and other people tell you that. It's the same with your art. You know, you write it. No one writes a book for Jesus hoping that it doesn't sell. It doesn't care if it sells because it's for Jesus. So I just think a lot of that stuff is just really complicated. And it's not as easy yeah. as you give it credit. So. All right, so let's answer this question. The next news item up for the day. This is a question. Is there a fascination with Michael Todd? All right, so let me let me explain why I'm asking this question. Over since Easter, well, I've seen this prior to this, right? But since Sunday, I have seen multiple Michael Todd Easter Sunday service reviews, and and I understand why that joint was crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that Bama Michael Todd is wilding right now. So I get why people are talking about that. But I've seen a growing what I what I wonder if is a fascination with Michael Todd. A lot of people calling him out, false teacher, this and that. And that may that may be true. I don't I don't I don't listen to him enough. But what I've heard, I'm not like, oh yeah, that dude's solid. Like I would that's not what I'm hearing. But what I'm seeing from other Christian creatives who do like YouTube channels or, or discernment blog type stuff, that there seems to be in my in my humble opinion a a fascination with Michael Todd. And so Strack, me and you had probably one of our most heated discussions about this earlier today. I, I was. It's been a little while. We yeah. yeah we had, we, we, we had, had. Me and Strack was arguing a little bit earlier today. It was in love. Uh -huh. Love. We was like we was we was pushing. So I want to bring people into that discussion, and and uh, and see if we still land in the same place. But so with Michael Todd, we were talking about a couple of people that we actually know. I've watched different people. I actually watched Ruslan uh, do a video on him, and he made a point which I agree with this. Where he said, um, basically, he said Michael Todd knows what he's doing. Like he knows that this stuff will garner him a lot of attention. He know it's like almost like it's marketing, advertising for, for the brand or for his church, whatever it is, right? But he said, you know, he's not stupid. He knows what's happening. He knows people are going to talk and do this. And I agree with that. I think he does these things. I don't think I. And again, speculation, right? I'm shooting from half court, and I'll find out from. I'm gonna get to heaven if I made it, but we don't. I don't know if he thinks when I do stuff, no one's. I think he feels like he has a world church, and so he knows when he does something or preaches a sermon or does a crazy illustration in a sermon that it's going to go viral. So I. Think oh, he has his, the audience of the world right now for yeah, sure. His team is their buzz marketers. They're thinking, how can we go viral mm -hmm. with this? It's buzz marketing, is what it is, and so. Um, so, I, but I wonder, like, what is the fascination with? Is there a fascination with Michael Todd? And it's like, why are so many Christian YouTubers targeting him and pointing out what he does? And so, I'll strike. I'll leave it open to you to kind of share, you know, where you're at with that, and then we'll just kind of volleyball this thing. Well, I think you know you have to mention, of course, the fact that Michael Todd is the pop in you know, dude right now. He is popular. A lot of people are following him. He has all kind of social media following. So he has a lot of attention that's being garnished and he's doing some pretty radical stuff. I think when he spit on his hand and put it on my man's face, that was like, you know, it was epic. I was actually his to brother in law too at that. Yeah, like come on, brother. fam. That's that is terrible. But anyway, um so I, you have to account for that. I mean I think that's why a lot of people are doing this now. Uh, is Mike, Michael Todd special? I don't think Michael Todd is special. I think, you know, I think it would be whoever the person is at the top. This was, you know, Benny Hinn. This was Joe Osteen. This is this is Stephen Furtick. You know, this is uh, T.D. Jakes. 
Like, all these guys, this is what's happened to them. You know, mm -hmm. dudes start making all kind of videos because they're crazy. Michael Todd is just the dude right now. You know what I mean? I, and I know I kind of sound like uh, the Pharisee that prophesied and was like, yo, if this dude is of God, you could find yourself fighting with God. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if he's not, it don't matter how many people follow him, he's going to crumble. You know, right. and it's going to crumble. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's that's... You can't help but consider that. Yeah. So, so that's where we at right now. So let me let me bring up where, where I'm at with this. I was telling Strack this earlier. Let me see what y'all think. Party people. So you want to get funky? So Sonic Force. Ah. So you want to get funky? Ah. Ah, just hit me. Clink. Let's clink the funk and then hit me. Y'all know about that Planet Rock. Beat your chest if you know about that, Planet Rock. Right. You know what? I, you know what? I, I I do love the song, but man, I can't get over Africa Bambada with his nonsense, I man. I can't. I can't. He's, he's all Kelly to me, fam. He just ain't been exposed. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Well, I he guess. has a little bit. That's why we talking about. He has a little bit, but not like Kelly. Nah, so he has, well, Kelly, that's a different ball game, and he needed. To be yeah, exposed. for sure. That bad. Yeah. it was out there. Videos was leaking and all that. But anyway, here's yeah. the thing with Michael Todd for me, and if you're a Christian, right? This idea of, I need to call out wolves, right? Wolves who, and, and I understand that. I don't have a problem with that. But to what degree does, how far does that go, right? How far do you take that? Like, how many videos do you make to call out the quote-unquote wolf in the church, right? Now, we could say that, now we could talk about why they're doing that. I mean, Shaq, you made a point earlier on the phone but if he had a thousand followers, no one would care. So technically, the motive is probably he has influence and and he's popular. And so is the is the goal, well, because he has influence, I want to expose who he is. I think that's it's I'd say that's fair to say that there's some people who do that, and that's part of the motivation. But my concern is twofold. It's one. Are you sure that's really what's driving you? Is it not the fact that if you talk about this dude, you're going to get more clicks, subs, and comments on it, right? Like, is that not at all? Like, is is there selfish ambition in your desire? I'm talking to people who are constantly going after this dude, right? I mean, you make a video or two, I get it. You rub spit on your face, we going to talk about that. You know, you do certain things, I get that. My my concern is, is it was more than twofold, but the first would be, I, I'm skeptical, skeptical of the motive of going after him. And, and, and what I would say now, what I'll put here is, I think there is an idolatry of Michael Todd's idolatry. That's what I'm concerned about. If, I, if concern may be too strong of a word, because... And, and, and let me tell you why. And I'm not saying everyone has to adopt my philosophy. Who am I? I'm fat and I got, and my tooth is missing. I ain't saying you got to adopt my philosophy. But as a pastor, he, here's what I would say. All right, there's a lot. We hit, through, through social media, we have access to a lot <laughs> I'm of sorry. I'm so, hold on, I'm <laughs> sorry. It's freaking knucklehead, man. Mm -hmm. Bambada is the hip-hop Dalai Lama. Like. 100%, man. <laughs> Hey, MC Profound is out there, man. He's, he's, he's on his thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on the I'm mic sorry, tonight. My bad. You know what I'm Your mic sounds nice. Check one. Check one. All right, so <laughs> it, here's the issue for me, right? I'm a pastor of a church. We got a couple hundred people. I love my church. As far as I know, there is no one in my church that is affected by the conceptual or functional theology of Michael Todd. There's no one. If they're, they're, I remember people have asked me, Hey, what do you think of Michael Todd? And I've answered that question in that sense, right? To the best of my ability, because I don't follow this dude. And, and I'm getting, this mm -hmm. is the point I'm trying to make. If, if you're in a church and you're a leader in a church and this dude is not affecting anyone in your church, I ain't talking about him. I don't really care what he says and does because I'm not talking about him. Now, if I'm trying to build a platform then talking about him is going to get me clicks, subs, comments, 
algorithm movement. And I get it. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but I'm just questioning, is it really because he's a wolf? Or is it because it'll get you, it's selfish ambition on your part, right? Is there an idolatry of his idolatry? Like Creflo Dollar, T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen, Benny Hinn. I've never done a sermon about none of them in my church because they're not affecting people in my church. So if he's not affecting anyone in your church, what is the fascination with exposing him as a wolf? That's that's one side of it for me. I want to give you a second if you want to comment on that. If not, Strike, I'm going to go. No, I was just going to say, like, when, as I'm listening to you talk, um, like, even with the idolatry of, of his idolatry, I can't help but see a correlation between what we just got done talking about with Christian creatives. So you have, mm -hmm. like... Mm. The Christian creatives are making Christian music, Christian content, and they're stepping out to make other content that's similar to the world content. So we would say, let's just say secular for the conversation's sake. So they're stepping out to make secular music, um, and we would question the motive. Like, yo, what's good with this motive here? Like, what y'all doing? What's the deal? You know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. and you can't help but wonder, is it because you want more of a fan base from the secular world that would not be accepting right. of your Christian content? Mm -hmm. So I think there you see, you kind of have a correlation between the two. Where Now, with the, with the secular music aspect of things, we I mean, I would personally be a little bit more lenient. I would be like, all right, you know. It's cool. Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? But it, when you come over to the video thing with wolves and all of that, now you're dealing with consequences, I think, that could have a little bit more weight mm -hmm. because you're dealing with teaching and you're teaching ideologies yeah. and the way people are supposed to think about things. Mm -hmm. You no, see I, a correlation there? Yeah, you agree? No, I, th I think you're on to something. And I think that's, to me... Concern is too strong of a word, but I'm using it because it's helpful in this context. The reason why I'm saying it's too strong of a word, because in the grand scheme of my life and, and what I feel God calls me to do, I really don't care about Michael Todd or people who make videos about me. But I do have, because I've been in the public sort of Christian bubble since 05, when I came out as Christian rap artist Voice, I've been there and I've traveled, you know, I've, I've had a public platform, a quasi, you know, celebrity, right? Like there, there's a degree in which I have grown to care about the broader church to some degree. So I can get like, I care about these people, but usually we try to draw people to Jesus or give them discernment that'll help them honor the Lord. What I feel like you, what you just touched on is what I'm getting at is there is what it seems like, seems is the operative word, because I'm not talking to these people to ask them why they're doing these videos. What seems like there is less of a concern for the body of Christ, and I'm going by what they put in their comment section sometimes when I read, how they just be cutting people and being kind of rude sometimes to people who may disagree with their video or whatever. It seems like there's more, there's less of a concern for harm to the church or your church, and that then there is, man, this is the hot name out there right now, and let's mm -hmm. go get it. You know, like Joel Osteen's, that's played out at this point. Even Stephen Furtick, it's kind of calmed down. Like people are like, ah, it is what it is. That's that's one one issue for me. Here's the second issue for me, and you feel free to disagree or push back on this track, or whatever. Here's the second issue for me. And I can't, I don't know if this is true or not. I can't, again, I don't have analytics on these, all these things. I don't, I'm not asking these people. So if you're one of these, just take this as a grain of salt. I'm not judging you. I don't know the mode. I don't know. This could be happening. But, but here's the thing, right? Let's take another religion. We could bash Jehovah's Witnesses. Like say we got on here, we just did episodes on Jehovah's Witness. If you're a Jehovah's Witness watcher right now, I'm sorry. We just don't agree with your theology, but we're not. I'm just using this as an example. It's not personal. But if you're, um, if you're, uh, we can talk about them. We can make tons of episodes on them, right? Are mm -hmm. we convincing Jehovah's Witnesses that they're wrong? Though? Maybe, right? But our content is largely going to be for the people who already ride with us and roll with us, 
right? I don't know if I'm actually reaching Jehovah's Witness with these videos. I can hope that I am. The analytics don't tell me if I'm reaching them and people are changing their mind, right? We just don't know that. So I wonder, like, how do you know, are these videos reaching the people they're intended to reach? Like, if you're really concerned for the members of his church or the people who follow him, are you reaching those people? Like, do you, do you, is there a, a certain targeted way where you're trying to, and I just, I don't think that there is. And the reason why is because I don't know if people genuinely care on that level. You know, when Paul talked about, he mentioned like well, oh, Alexander. Well, oh, Good. I was just going to say, there are people who do care at that level though. So there, there are there are, like, I know from myself personally, like, even just how Conf and Christ said these videos are beneficial, in her opinion, exposing wolves, right? Um, for myself, like, people seeing this stuff, these errors, gives them or equips them with conversation pieces right. when they run into a Jehovah's Witness. Right. Or when they run into someone who bangs with Mike Todd, like if they're at the store, yo, yo, my son's watching these videos. Have you seen Mike Todd yet? You know what I'm saying? Like, check them out. And if you've already peeped this, you've already got some information on the person, you can then deal with it. So I think in that regard, that's what she's probably talking about, how they've been beneficial for people who, like herself, grew up in the Word of Faith movement. When they see these things, it sometimes does function in that way, like um, American Gospel videos. They function in that way. They point out, you know, the error. I think they're and done in a more tasteful. Kind of right. I was just gonna say. I think they're done in a more tasteful manner, in a more, you know, God honoring way. I, I would say because they're more strategic. They're more. There's a lot more time and effort put into them. Yeah. But the reality is, when we talk a lot, we're more liable to sin. And the words of many sin is not absent, right? Right. And sometimes people just say too much about the same thing and they end up sinning in the process. Yeah, 100%. I know I'm guilty of that. So make, just to be clear, and I know you're not saying this, but I want to be clear for anyone. I'm not talking about should any videos exist. I'm course, talking yeah. about the repeated videos of a or a few YouTubers over and over and over again, bro. Like, right. at what point, like, how many videos are you going to make about this dude? Like, right. we get it, fam. He's a, you think he's a wolf? You know, I, I'll say that when I see enough stuff and have my own. So I'm not riding what do you, with it what do you think about? So... What do you think about the, the, the point brought up here about um, an evangelist or someone who disciples people or, or a layperson might see it differently than a pastor as far as these videos are concerned? I think it's an interesting point, especially with the evangelist, because the pastor does does have more concern with the flock at hand. Mm -hmm. His, you know, he's he's like yourself. You deal with all the nuances, all the questions, all the the lives that you know personally. Um, so you look at these types of things on the outside a little bit differently. Right. Um, but but where an evangelist might have a, a totally different perspective because they're looking more for they they view the church more from a, a worldly. Like from the world's perspective. Mm -hmm. you know? So, okay, that's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. So let's, because I think that actually proves my point, right? Okay. So we're talking about YouTube, and what they, 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 we use this term, the internet is forever, right? Like once it's out there, it's out there. Yeah. So here's right. my question to that, because I'm not saying that that's not true. How many Michael Todd is a wolf videos does it take to convince a person, right? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I how do. many how many Christians do. does it take to screw the light bulb? How many right. videos, fam, does it take? I mean, all I I only had to watch American Gospel once. Right. I didn't need to watch it twenty times. I don't need, you know, fifty different. I don't, I get it. Like you watch, it was good video. It was some good stuff. Thank you. I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm staring away from him. Like how many right. warnings do you need to make? Because on YouTube, your videos stay, stay out yeah. there. The video, I, videos I put out 20, 15 years ago are still online if I find them, if I look for them. The internet is forever. So again, it's not an issue of should a video be done. It's an issue of 
how many of them do you need to make? And if you're making <laughs> so many of them, is there not an idolatry of his idolatry in you? That's is my concern. Something weird, yeah. yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like it's it's almost like, fam, you have an obsession with his that he's a wolf. How many videos do you need to make? How many videos <laughs> do you need to make? How many MCs must get dissed? How many right. MCs must get dissed, right? Khan, thank you. Khan, we're grateful for you too. Khan is one of the newer OGs. <laughs> I need We're future. We're future. I need future. Kira, they not here. Brandon, I know we started a little late tonight, but Khan, Pro she be kind of crazy. Khan's holding it down. Yeah. She, she be, she, her, her MC profile, they becoming some of the new OGs, right? I'm banging with them. They're holding it down right I'm banging now. with them, right? But I, <laughs> listen to her point, though. I mean, again, I only had to watch one mic top before I knew it was bad teaching a long time ago. Like, at what point, like, right. how so if the spirit of God is in you, my dude, how much discernment do you need? How many videos do you need to watch before you realize it? Do I have to make 30 videos for you to see that this dude's a wolf? Right. And if I didn't make a video, would you not see that he's a wolf by listening to him? Like, are we, you know, again, so I just feel like I think there's something else there. I feel like the, we're, the people who are targeting his selfish ambition may be doing it selfishly ambitiously and, 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 and mm -hmm, we got balls we rap we rap rap you know what i'm saying and, and and let me tell you why here's another reason why and again i could be wrong i could be wrong listen i could be wrong scarlet letter w i could be wrong right but here's another reason and again let me just qualify this i don't watch discernment blog videos i don't really care about them and here's why let me tell you why because i used to watch them just to peep where people were going with it let me tell you why I don't care about discernment blog videos and these exposing people videos. You know why? Because when I watch them, I, I've yet to watch one, and I, I'm sure I could be wrong, but there's never been one, right? I, I, I yet to watch them and walk away feeling like I need to honor the Lord in the way I see this person or relate to them. I usually walk away thinking, they're wolves, people who follow them are stupid. I don't walk away thinking, wow, man, these people, let me pray for this dude. I mean, Jesus yeah. said, love your enemies. So false teachers don't count? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that's easy. I, and I come from the streets. So I have to actually work at, I'm not, me and Strike aren't naturally like, let me just love these people. And I'm not right. naturally like that, right? It's I come Lord, from, man. let me it's smack this dude, man. I'm getting tired of his mouth, man. I mean, I come from that. And by the grace of God, I don't do that. But we come. Right. So I get it. I'm, I'm, I want, I'm with all the smoke. I'm with, so I'm I got from a that. punching bag downstairs, too. You know I'm what I mean? with that. So I'm that's not that. my problem. But it's like <laughs> when I watch these videos about Michael Todd or about this dude or that dude, when I watch these videos, I don't walk away from them feeling like, man, what does it look like the honor the Lord? Because these videos don't tell you that. Now, the purpose, uh, if you're going to be an influencer, right, if you want that role, then what are you influencing people to? That's the question I have. When I watch these videos, bro, I, don't, I just walk away almost hating the dude. Well, I can tell you the, the way I used to walk away was, one, I, I just received a bunch of information that I can now put in my pocket for whatever reason. But what mostly what would end up happening is I would talk about it when I see people like yo did you hear what da -da -da did you know what I'm saying and, and it would almost just sound like gossip sometimes you know what I mean it was mm -hmm. it was like we just we were for the most part talking about how crazy people were that acted like they was Christian mm -hmm. like yo these dudes out here claiming they Christian yo this is great did you hear about the new heresy you know what I'm saying like but you I think people go through seasons with churches so like for myself, the reason I died, I dove into those like discernment videos and all those and blogs and all of that stuff is because I was coming out of a church that I realized was teaching wrongly. You know what I'm saying? So I dove, and I started searching for right teaching. And anybody that pointed out the same type of false teaching that I was receiving or the same errors that I was seeing or hearing, I ran to them to listen to what they had to say about it. You know what I'm saying? So then I just, I developed like a, a list of dudes that I would listen to, discernment dudes, and I would learn from them. 
You know, that how to how to identify false teaching, how to identify twisting of scripture and how to but I also learned how to judge people. Like, you know what I'm saying? And not always in the right way. So it it wasn't like it wasn't like I walked away thinking Yo, man, I would love to have a conversation with somebody like that one day to be able to lead them to Christ. It was more like, yo, them dudes is the enemies. Like, they leading people astray. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to get snatch everybody out of their church that I can snatch out. And anybody else in their church that wants to keep their people there who fights against me, they in the same boat. You know, so you're automatically just building this, uh, a battle that battles Ephesians 6. Right. You know, you, you you build a battle up against humanity and against mankind when we're told that that's not our spiritual warfare. So, again, I come back to, you know, what I believe the Lord has given me is that text where the dude says, if it's of God, man, you know, you could find yourself fighting with the Lord. I don't think these are anything like what looks like what comes from God. I mean, I don't think Todd, Todd does anything like what comes from the Lord, you right. know, or a lot of these false teachers. Um, but I say, you know, uh, I don't, I don't bother with it because it's not, it's a waste of time for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm also not going to heckle people. It is what it is. If they want to make the videos, make the videos. You know what I'm saying? But I get your point. I think if it, if you're making five, six videos about the same scenario, at least let them be about different scenarios. If you are doing the different videos, you know what I'm saying? Like this dude keeps doing different things. I kind of understand that. But I also get where you're coming at with the, it seems like a fetish. You know, there's somewhat of a fetish because of what you're receiving from it as well. So I get it, man. Yeah, man. I think, I think, uh, <laughs> hey, hey, Mark. Nah, that's not how it goes, baby. We just deal with the spirits in this joint. It's like, nah, I do got a little fan on my dude. <laughs> but, but, but the, the thing is, again, to, to your point, kind of, and to my point, it's like, I'm good with all the, uh, you know, say what you got to say, man. But like, ultimately, learning how to spot false teachers on one level is not really like a biblical command, though. But like the fruits of the spirit are, are though. And so in many ways, Strike, I've seen you mature. We've been doing this show. This is our fourth season together. Yeah. We've grown a lot together. We've had many conversations and have shaped each other, right, to get to this mm -hmm. point. But not everybody has a you, a iron sharpens iron, and like me and you. So right. you, so you watch these videos, and you may learn how to. When you said you learn how to judge people wrongly, one hundred percent. So at what point? Because now you now, you, and, and I think what happens is you grow in a level of arrogance, because in your mind you got you think you got to expose and stop false teachers, and it's like, man, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, right? I, right, I mean, right. I mean, what did the the Pharisees' whole job was thinking Jesus was a false teacher and trying to stop him, right? So I'm not saying Jesus obviously wasn't, and the Pharisees weren't. We know that, but I'm making a, a more a, a point rather than specifically about that dynamic. It's just I think the, the the challenge with that is you end up becoming a heresy hunter, and I think if once you get there, it's harder to get to the point where. Man, how do I learn how to love my brother and sister who I really disagree with? Like when 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 Paul called out Jonas and John Bray's and these people, did he when he named names, these people actually did real harm to to Paul. He wasn't just naming every false teacher in the area. He talked about, look, there would be people who would walk away from sound teaching and all of that stuff have nothing mm -hmm. to do with people who profess to be believers that live like this. I get it. But put, there's no command that say you call it out. Now, granted, you got Ephesians 5.11, expose the deeds of darkness. And that's what we in Strack mm -hmm. try to do. That's sort of one of the re reasons why I do what I do. But there is a sense where, like, if you've personally done something to personally hurt my church, yeah, I would say something. But, like, there's so many false teachers across the world. Like, it, how do you determine which one? Is Michael Todd really that dude? No, it's just that dude right now. And I think when people do it, it's like connected to something that benefits them, likes, channel. Like, this is to be clear, like, I just don't, I, you know, I guess you know what it is, man. I, I distrust or I doubt 
the pure motives of people who are doing this consistently. Not making a video, making tons of them about the same, about the most popular and calling him out, right? Yeah, I think we, I think we once again find ourselves with a dilemma that could only be found in today's world because you're 100%. talking about social media. Right, yeah. You know, this is something that the writers of, of, the, of Scripture had no clue, you know, what type of stuff we would be dealing with in this regard. So we have to no. go back to the context to understand how they would handle things, you know, and, and in light of the reality that these were people would have been right in front of them. They would have been in relationship with people. And that's, these are the people they would have been handling in that way. You know, like when you say Paul, there's people within their churches. Now, when you broaden it up with social media and the church and the world is so small, now it's like, okay, people make arguments about, yo, but it is hurting. It is hurting the church. It is hurting this. So people have this like desire to be, um, and I, I think it may start from, I think oftentimes it does start from desiring to do all things as unto the Lord. But I think oftentimes it becomes like, I'm going to become the one that does this work for the Lord. Like, I'm, it's going to be my special work unto the Lord. And they become kind of like, you know, uh, superheroes, if you will, or some type of, you know, uh, super discerners. You know what I mean? Like, this is how certain people are making their mark in today's world, in yeah. the church. Yeah. I mean, that's just a reality. And... So, and it's going to be done wickedly by some, and by some it's going to be done in a righteous manner. Uh, that's just, that's the reality we're at. You got to check your heart, though, regardless what you're doing. If you're trying to do something to benefit the body, to honor Christ, make sure it has those two anchors in place with all the words that you talk right. about. All so the let me, let me read say. something. I mean, let's, let's talk through this real quick. We're going to wrap up soon with, with this. I, I want to read this to all of y'all, right? To all the party people out there, right? I want to read this passage and you let's think about this for a second. This is this is a passage that challenges me in this particular area. All right. So 1 Corinthians 10 verses 3 through 15. If you want to open a Bible, good. I'm reading from the ESV translation. Here's what here's what the, this is the word of God. This isn't my interpretation. I'm just going to read what it says. Listen to what it says here. According to the grace of God given to me. Like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it, all right? So obviously, he's talking about the foundation is the gospel, and he's saying other people are going to build on what he's done, all right? Then he says this, verse 11, For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will be made, will, will manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. Now listen to that. So here's what he's saying. There's going to come a day, the day, judgment day is going to judge what kind of foundation, what was the work, the foundation. The fire is going to test it, right? And this is what he says in verse 14. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Now, this is how I interpret this passage. Here's how I interpret this. Paul is saying, and he's, I think this is a passage talking about for pastors, ministers. Paul's saying, I lay the foundation of Jesus Christ, and others will build on that foundation. And some are going to build on uh, silver, gold, precious stones, or wood, hay, and straw. And he said, each one's work will be made. So each one's work is going to be tested. How you build, how did you preach? How did you structure your church? How did you disciple? What did you, all of that is going to be tested by the fire, by the truth of God. And then he says, if the work that you did, if you really laid a solid foundation, or which we would call gospel truth, if you laid a foundation and, and there's root, then it survives, you're going to be rewarded for that. 
you're going to be rewarded for your obedience in the foundation. I firmly believe only because of the grace of God that there is going to be some reward for me for laying down a foundation that's true in Christ. But then he says, but if anyone's work is burned up, meaning you, it was faulty doctrine, faulty practices, all of that, right? It, you were building on hay, wood, and straw. That's not, well, we, I think that's not sound doctrine. He says, if anyone's work, this verse 15, is burned up, if it, if it proves this wasn't good stuff, bro, he will suffer loss. You're not going to get any rewards. Though he himself will be saved, but only as through the fire. I take that to mean this person is still going to make it to heaven, but you're not going to have much rewards because your work burned up. That's a challenge to me. So how mm -hmm. do I process Mike Todd in light of this verse? Is it possible? Is he a wolf? Because a wolf to me is not a Christian. A wolf is not a believer to me. Right. When you say someone's a wolf, you're saying they're not a Christian. When the Bible talks about wolf in sheep's clothing, it's not talking about Christians who were just acting. They're, these are people that are not Christians, that appear to be Christians. Now, that could be. I don't so know. You don't, think, you, don't, you don't think wolves in sheep's clothing are, are people acting like they're Christians? But they're yeah, not. yeah, but I think the Bible is describing. Okay. But, they, but when you say a wolf in sheep's clothing, you're saying they're not really a Christian, though. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like that's that's the point. When you yeah, call someone yeah. a wolf, that's the, that would be the judgment. That would yeah, be that's the, the judgment. judgment. You're saying yeah. they're not a real Christian. Right. So if you call Michael yeah, you're saying Todd wearing a wolf, sheep's clothes. you're saying he's not a real Christian. Okay. Now that's your assessment based on his teaching. But what I read here is it's possible that he's a real Christian who may be building on hay, wood, and straw, so he might not receive the rewards that another dude who wasn't even known who doesn't have the platform, like your pastor, solid dude, solid brother, your Lee elder, solid brother. I've only met him a little couple times. Bang with him, humble dude, solid. He'll mm -hmm. probably receive more rewards than Mike Todd because he's building on gold, silver, and precious stones. Mike Todd may mm -hmm. be more popular, but his work is going to burn up but he still will be saved. So this is why I have a problem with calling these people out based on the public presentation of what they put on YouTube, on their Sunday sermon. Now I'm not saying there's not a place for it. What I'm saying is I'm not willing to make that eternal distinction unless you clearly denounce Christ or certain things that are just obvious. That's the problem yeah. that I yeah, have. I, I'm with you. I think we need. I think we definitely need to be careful. But I mean, it's similar to like when you arguing with your wife, right? And you mm -hmm. say, "Yo, don't do that. Like that's stupid." And then her response would be, "You calling me stupid?" And 100%, you're like, "No, I'm not right. calling you stupid. Right. But no, I'm saying what you're about right. to do is stupid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying?" Like, <laughs> and because so, I know your wife, I can hear that coming. I can hear all of it. Right. Oh yeah, totally. One hundred. That's that happens at least once a week. Right. But anyway, uh, when floor, you talk great. about wolves, when you talk about wolves, so I think that's like at least for myself. When I call, when I say, "Yo, this dude is like a wolf over here," like Mike right. Todd is very wolfish. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like the stuff he's doing, and I say that because he's drawing men and women unto himself. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think it. I think you can make that case. Yeah. Um, with the and stuff I would agree with that evaluation. There. Just from what I can see, right? So, I would agree from the cheap seats. Right. From the cheap seats, I would agree with that. Right. I, I mean, and and really, that's all we have to go off of is mm -hmm. what we can see. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. the, I guess the question is then: Do we need to make that determination? You know, like, do I need to make the determination as to whether or not this man is a wolf? Um, and when I see his stuff and I have a conversation with someone else, I'm gonna tell them, "Yo, I think my man is a wolf." Like that's just where I'm at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But in, in conversation, do I think that the Lord can save him? Yes. I think the Lord can save anyone until their last breath. I think that's the way God works. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? He saved the dude at the cross right next to him who we don't know what his life was like. He might have been a wolf. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? So can the Lord save them? Yes. But they're also acting like wolves right now. <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's the role I think, I think that we can say. Mm -hmm. Like, because... 
Well, I think you're I right. Would, I think there's biblical assume, precedent for that, right? You judge a tree by the fruit that it bears. Right. And and I would also, even when as I read this text, I think you're I think you are more gracious than I would be when I read this text in regards to someone like a Michael Todd, only because I think Paul is assuming here that these are brothers that are desiring to do good works. I wouldn't say Mike Todd is desiring to do good works per se. I would say he's desiring to draw more men unto himself. So here's the problem with that, Strike. Here's my problem with that. You're assuming that that's what Paul means, and the text does not. I'm say assuming that. that for sure. Right. So I'm totally if, assuming if we that. do that, then yeah. we can go anywhere, right? The text does not. But but wait. Out. But I have. But I have. But I have reason to assume that right. though. So when I read the text and I go up to verse five, what then is Apollos? What then is Paul? They are servants through whom you believed, right. and each has the role the Lord has given. So you're talking about sound dudes who are teaching. They're desiring to teach unto Christ. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. So he's laying out like, yo, God is the one who does the work. Right. Like, it doesn't matter if I do a whole lot of water or I just put a drop on this brother's tongue. God is the one who does the work. So my intent when I come forth and I yeah, I want to hold on to some of my water, so I'm just going to give him a little tiny bit. While the next brother's like, yo, I'm going to give this dude my water because I'm going to serve him beyond myself. Both works are going to be put through the fire. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. and, and both are going to come unto the Lord because they both served the Lord. But one served with whackness and the other one served with selflessness. Right. <laughs> so... I just I wouldn't put Mike Todd in that category, but that's that's me though. You but know I'm mean? not putting him in a category. I'm I'm introducing the category of people whose works Got will you. be burned up, but they will be saved. Now I'm talking right. so about So be careful. This. I'm I'm exclusively saying that is a functional category that God put in his word. That some people's right. work will be burned up and but they they'll be saved but only as through the fire. They make it to heaven. I agree. Right? So to me that's where um that's the issue. I'm sorry. I got I got caught up in the where is the uh it's Philippians 1, come. Philippians 1 where Paul says regardless of some have selfish motives. It's Philippians 1 where he says some preach the gospel in envy, some preach but who cares the Christ is being proclaimed, right? So right, right. to me, it's less about it's it's less about Michael Todd and more about there is a category in the Bible. Now, if you want to say, well, I think it's assuming a level of maturity to some degree or just error that's not as gross as his. That's fine. Do that. The passage doesn't say that, but you can if you want to. That's fine. For me, I'm saying because this category exists, I'm not comfortable because when I say someone's a wolf. You use the word ish. You, that That's mature right there. Most people aren't using ish. I've been called names that are not true of who I am. I've mm -hmm. been called that because you disagree with what I said. I've been called names that, that that's not true of me at all. There are times you've had to correct people who've come to you and be like, nah, you misunderstand the curve. You misunderstand what he was saying mm -hmm. in that moment. So I know what that feels like. So I'm not saying that Michael, T I'm not defending this dude at all. I don't bang with him, and I don't got enough money to buy anything he's talking about. So, but my point is less about, we're talking about him, but he's sort of the, with him, it's more of the issue of repeated, what I think, obsessive, I just doubt the motives of people who are doing that. Put out a good, right. solid video. You know, some, like me and you, we low budget with this. I be holding up my cell phone. You can't hardly see. We ain't ready to get more. Until we get to 5K, get us to 5K, and we're going to change the production value up. But to do that, it would require a lot more work, and I'm not doing that until I feel like people are really wanting to be a part of what we're doing and building. So well, you just need to do a few Mike Todd videos, man. That's a, I mean, I'm thinking few, about it. Jump you know what I'm saying? Look, Mike Todd is a heretic. You know? I'm thinking about doing it. Mike Todd is a wolf. He's going to, I just think like, and whether, and again, I'm not debating the dude. Please hear me out. I'm not, and I'm not talking to you, sir. I'm talking to, I'm not defending that dude. I don't bang with him at all. I would never have that dude. I wouldn't preach at his church and I wouldn't have him come to my church. I don't bang with him, I don't, but I don't watch him enough. But I'm also not going to say, when you call someone a wolf, to me, in this day and age, 
Christians need to be a little bit careful. We, we call people things that, that determine their eternal destination, and you don't really know that, fam. I mean, in all seriousness, let's just be clear, right? We got to persevere to the end, and there's a, there's a sort of a, a interesting dynamic of the spirit will carry us to completion, right? But then we also have to work, right? Make your calling and election short. We've seen many people that we thought were going to make it to the end, and they did not. I think people need to be careful and make sure that you are persevering and fighting for real because you'll mess around and get humbled when four years from now you're not a believer and you made all these videos about this dude like i think you gotta be careful man all of a sudden you'll find i'm not talking about you strike i'm just saying people who make mm -hmm. these videos you gotta be careful slim you haven't persevered to the end fam you need to make right. your calling an election sure before you start worrying about everybody else's calling an election. And that's, to me, it's like, you know what, man? I get it. If that's what you're going to do, do it. I ain't saying you can't do it. I just think, bruh, I hope your heart is right. Because, look, when Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't I do these mighty words? I don't know you. Man, I think some of these some of these discernment blogs, the way they talk, I don't know if Jesus knows you. I, don't, I can't say that. Just like I'm not going to defend, like, what used to bother me about like like this is this is always the case right with with people if they have good theology sometimes we don't care about nothing else because here's the flip side yeah. of the michael todd's right and here's another layer for me and i ain't gonna go too much in the weeds with this because people gonna think it think think i'm woke but the, but the scriptures awake oh sleep arise right i'm definitely awoke but but here's the thing though You'll attack Mike Todd, but you'll defend Jonathan Edwards. How do you know, because you like his theology, you just assume that he's with the Lord. How do you know that, though? You'll defend people who are dead, and you have no clue. None of us that I know of have gone to heaven, confirmed, yep, George Whitfield, Jonathan Edwards, they're there, and some other people who own slaves of it. None of us know that. But people will defend them because they had good theology. But you'll attack Martin Luther King, who led millions of people in nonviolent opposition, using the gospel, preaching, praying. Churches were packed. He wasn't leading people in none of it. So you're going to defend a dude who, who, who taught theology on beating people. And slave, slavery wasn't just owning people. You did whatever you wanted to them. You'll defend them tooth and nail. But then say, I'm not buying. I don't got enough. I don't make enough money to buy that. And this is what I'm talking about. It's the hypocrisy. If you like his theology, he went to heaven. You don't know that. M Matthew 23, Jesus said, look, this is what, this is, this, listen to what, this is Jesus' words. Listen to what he said in Matthew. This is scary to me. This is one of this, this to me, this is a more scary verse than Matthew 7. Because in all honesty, Matthew 7, Jesus was saying, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, under the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my father who was in heaven. So Jesus said in that in that narrative, who goes to heaven? Who does the will of the father? Well, what is the will of the father? To believe in Jesus. So that was clear. That passage isn't as scary as people make it out to be, right? This passage for me as a pastor is scary. Then Jesus, this is Matthew 23, beginning of verse 1. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. So do and observe whatever they tell you, but not the works they do. Listen to this. The scribes and the Pharisees. Now remember who Jesus was beefing with his whole earthly ministry. Scribes and Pharisees. Had some Sadducees and religious leaders. In you still got too. the First Corinthians on the screen. That's gonna confuse the people. Oh man, I'm tripping. Let me take that off. I'm in the zone right now. All right, so we on, we on. Thank you, bro. We on Matthew 23. Yeah. Jesus said, talking to the people, it said, then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees who had bad teaching, they were they were they were abusing the Mosaic law. 
Jesus was in constant confrontation with the scribes and the Pharisees because they were creating laws called the oral traditions that they were making equivalent to God. And here's what he says. The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. That's a crazy comment. That they have the authority of Moses. So do and observe whatever they tell you, but not the works they do. For they preach, but right. they do not practice. They tie up heavy burden. So he's basically saying, look, I'm still leaving these people here to be the teachers of you. So listen to what they said. They can still teach you Mosaic law, what I, what I, to, uh, but don't imitate them. That's a crazy passage, man. That means, yeah. so this is where a guy like Michael Todd, to me, is in danger. Because God will still use you to explain things to people and you disqualify. You disqualify when you stand in front of them. Yeah, I mean, there's people who have heard the gospel from Benny Hinn. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Like, 100%. Clear gospel from, from Benny Hinn. 100%. And yet when we look at his life, we see all the other, you know, garbage. So I'll tell you one thing that, I, I, and this will be the last probably thing that I have to say, but it's just me being a little bit transparent in regards to these videos. So when I was heavy into the discernment world when James McDonald was being exposed uh, James McDonald was a huge pastor, did a lot on finances and stuff. Like, uh, his Harvest was his baby, basically. Harvest churches, like, they were all over the place, worldwide. I just read an, an article today where he uh, apparently assaulted a woman, and he's now going to be charged. I mean, there was stuff that was brought up on him where Harvest wound up removing him from the church board. Like, he, it just it was crazy. Oh, James you White? Know? Who's Even about? like, no, James McDonald. James, oh, James McDonald. McDonald. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, James McDonald. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even even to the point of like, you know, uh, an attempt to an attempt on someone's life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? As far as hiring a hitman status, like, oh, dude did all kind of stuff while still claiming uh, to be a believer, to be a teacher of the of the word, still trying to teach from the pulpit. But the point I'm getting at is this: I saw the article today. I read the article, and I and immediately, my thoughts weren't, man. I hope the Lord doesn't work in this man's heart. Mm. I hope the Lord saves this man. Yeah. Those weren't my thoughts. Like, my thoughts were more like, yo, I can't stand this dude. Like, mm -hmm. he's still doing stuff. Like, he's still out here acting a fool. He's, yo, I hope he gets, like, crushed behind everything he's doing. Like, that was my reaction. And until now in our conversation, like, thinking about it, uh, bringing, coming back to that article... And I don't think that reaction is acceptable, you know, as I as I sit here and examine it. I don't think it's acceptable for me as a present individual claiming to love Christ and to be a believer. Mm. My reaction should have been along the lines of, you know, Lord, please save this man. You know, he's yeah, lost yeah. like he's, you know, but, you know, on the other end, my reaction was more like this man is a wolf, you know, and, and is it true? Yeah, he's done a lot of wolf things. You know what I'm saying? Like, am I justified in saying so? Maybe some would think so. Uh, but at the same time, is it my place to react that way? Because if I if I have a practice or a pattern of reacting that way to those type of, type of situations, I'm going to end up getting it wrong. Yeah, yeah, well said. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm going to end up doing more damage. Yeah, bro. I mean, I, I, I do. I, I think there's a place for that. I think there's there's a place to pro and that's what I'm getting at. It's like when we watch these videos, I think we have to be when we're watching videos where we're calling out false teachers and stuff, right? It's the same kind of I think it comes from more the theological side. You made a great point about forty minutes ago, Strack, where like we're dealing with uncharted biblical territory because we're living in a day and age that the Bible didn't foresee. So we still have to, so when we take the, so what are the practices that the Bible still speaks to? And a lot of that is going to mm -hmm. be the fruits of the spirit, the moral components. Yeah, of I mean, it's not that the Lord didn't foresee it. No, It's not right. that the Lord didn't foresee right. it. Yeah. But and, what was and, communicated and written by man, it, mm -hmm. it, you have to figure out how to apply it to today's context. But I think the way you apply it, though, is what fruit of the spirit is this producing in me? Like, right. what's the fruit right. of the spirit that I need to have? That's that's going to always right. guide you. 
Like, okay, even if how does this make me look more like Christ? Yeah, what fruit of the spirit am I supposed to have towards Mike Todd or other people? Right. Like what? Like you? Jesus is allowed to say, "Well, when I come back, I'm gonna crush these people." I'm that we're not supposed to imitate everything Christ did. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I think there are things. I'm not walking on water. I'm not healing. I'm not feeding twelve. You know, five to twelve thousand people. Like there are some things that like we just don't imitate, and I think. We think our job is to flip over tables in the temple, and I think our job is to clean up the stains on the floor of the temple, right? So I just, I just, and, and, and the reason why I'm saying this is when you look at Luke 17, this has been a game changer for me over the last few years and has single, and I won't say single-handedly, but has been a huge reason why I've kind of backed away, even though I'm a passionate guy, I'm from that, right? But I've backed away from some of the all the smoke right so let me tell you what jesus says i'm gonna read this this is luke 17 beginning in verse 7 here's what jesus says right he says will any one of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to him when he has come in from the field come at once and recline at table will he not rather say to him prepare supper for me and dress properly and serve me while i eat and drink and afterward you will eat and drink does he, does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. This is how I feel. I'm an unworthy servant. So when I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, that's the mindset I'm trying to have. So who are you, fam, that you're calling out all these people? Like, bro, make sure that you're that you're recognizing that you're an unworthy servant. Like, you're not better than Michael Todd. By the grace of God, you just don't believe what he believes. You don't think what he thinks. But I'm not better than that dude. And when we be caught, I think when we're making excessive, I'm not saying don't make a video. You do something wild, me and Strack gonna cross-examine it. But we're not gonna sit there and chase a dude because I think underneath it all, it is clout chasing. There's a selfish ambition that comes from these Mark Rogers and 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 Michael Todd and you know now the Joe Lowsteins and the Creflo Dollars they're played out. That's like oh that's oh we need fresh mm-hmm. meat. We need fresh wolves to call out. Joe Lowstein still got one of the biggest churches out there. Ain't nobody talking about him no more. Because it's not really about false teachers. It's about it's about the new hot product that I can benefit from. Joe Lowstein still packing in stadiums across the country. You ain't saying nothing. You know what I'm saying? You tired of that because that's not going to get you the same clicks as Mike Todd because he's new. This is what I'm concerned with. But I'm not even, you do that if you would do that because I can't prove that people are doing it for that reason. What I'm concerned with, if that's, if that's an appropriate word, is how other believers are watching these videos and what are you walking away with? And if you're watching videos that are not reminding you of honoring the Lord when you're done, don't watch them videos. From I don't care how entertaining they are, because I, I would, me and Shrek, we said this earlier. I think I'm positive, and I'm saying this because there's no way unless you are the dude or live closely by the dude that you can have accurate details. Some of the stuff people are saying about Michael Todd is slander. It's gossip and slander. You cannot prove that from a Sunday sermon or sermons what he does in this pro. It's slander. So you are allowing people, giving people the freedom. And, and again, I don't watch their videos, so I could be wrong. But qualified and be like, you know what? I could be wrong. Like we're saying, I could be wrong, but this is what it seems like. Say that. Stop acting like, nah, fam, this is, look at this. Look at this false teacher. He's a, man, bro, just, just man, you got to make, man, make your calling an election show, man. I'm just trying to persevere to the end, bro. Just because I believe in perseverance of the saints, I ain't finished yet. I'm still here. You you know, it says, Romans, Revelation 21, 7, he who conquers to the end will be saved. How are you conquering? Are you conquering to the end? I don't know, fam. Tell, calling out false teachers all the time, I ain't conquering to me. Because all you doing yeah, I mean, is, plus, huh? In, in the same vein, you, you have to consider, you know, you reap what you sow as well. You know what I'm saying? There's a reality. So if you, one of the things you talked about earlier is like, you gave the example, if someone does this and then later down the road, they fall away. 
but not along the same exact it's not the exact same situation as what you described but someone who was a major discernment blogger type dude got caught up with the law you know got caught up mm. driving under intoxication into, yeah, being I, heard, intoxicated. I remember that i remember that was recent too that wasn't too long ago that was very recent last and year it was a, it was something that yeah, and I remember, you know, like the articles done on others that had fallen in very similar ways, you know, mm-hmm. by those, by that blog post, by that, that, that uh, discernment blog. Um, so, yeah, this is real rap, man. Stuff comes back around, brother. You know, the it Lord does. will you humble us careful, in man. many different ways. Now yeah, listen for to sure. This. Listen to what Jules yeah. said, because Jules is another OG. Jules, Mark Rogers is in the house. Uh, some of the OGs are here, right? Some of the cross examined OGs. Listen to what Jules said. I attended Lakewood for many years, and there are so many ministries within the church that go much deeper than his weekend services. It was a great church for me when I first gave my life to God. Rape Dead was in the church saying their other, this is my point. You have, me, This is the last thing I'm going to say. because Me and Strack talked about this. So I preach almost every week, right? When you pre- preaching a sermon is only one aspect of ministry of a church life. If you think about it, there are 168 hours in a week and only one of those is on Sunday. And that's one hour a week out of 167 other hours. So if you preach one hour, that's one hour of teaching for people to think about and meditate on for seven days, right? You got 167 other hours. Let's say you get eight hours of sleep, right? So that's 40 hours. Let's say you work 40 hours a week. That's 80, you're at 81. Let's say you spend uh, 30 hours a week with your family, right? Now you're at, you know, 111 hours, right? There's still 50, you know, uh, 66, 67 more hours in a week. There's a lot going on, fam. You're only preaching. So a sermon on Sunday, no matter how dynamic it is, it's not going to have the kind of reach because you're competing with the other 167 hours that people have in a week. So while sermons are necessary and important, I don't think they change lives the way we think. What changes lives, and this is what Jules said. Listen, my preaching may be good to some people and it may be effective. But what, what changing people's lives is, is when I'm sitting with them one-on-one or both a couple on Tuesday through Saturday. That's where we're talking about how you live. Because you could just be entertained by what I'm saying. You could just be entertained by that. Cool. But how are you... I think it all works. It all works collectively. Right. It all works collectively. It I mean, does. It is, it is but what I think we, we put a lot Lord of on emphasis Sunday, so. on a sermon, and I just don't. Being a pastor for 15 years now... I don't put a lot of emphasis on... No, I'm not saying that. What I mean is I don't put a lot of sanctification on sermons. I put, I think sanctification is the work that's... Sunday sermons are, when they're done right, are to remind you of God's claim on your life. You remind you of that. You kind of recommit each week to keep doing, keep persevering. It's a feature. I mean, you're other. encountering the Lord. You're encountering His yeah, Word. 100%. With all of that. But that's what that is. But then you, I mean, I've taught on Sunday and by Wednesday, I, I forgot certain things I said. People be like, oh, Pastor mm-hmm. Carl, I love when he's, I was like, oh, that's right, I did say that. You forget, right? So of course the people who didn't teach, who didn't do all the preparation, got forgotten. I think we judge what a person says on Sunday and think that's the, nah, I, I like that Jules said that. Look, in his church, Joel o, now I'm not saying Joel Osteen is solid or not. What I'm saying is, is, a Sunday sermon is is a microcosm of the life of the church. I don't care how dynamic the preacher is. There's so many other facets to, to govern a church and what people go through. You might get, a lot of people might like this Sunday. They might be just entertained by the dude, for real. But they're real hard. They're real. The people that are pouring into them in that Wednesday night Bible study, like the one you lead, that's, that's the people probably get a lot out of that. Because you chopping it up, you talk, and you asking questions. When you hear a sermon, you just taking notes and you just keep it moving. You know, mm-hmm. and then that's it. But when you really chop it up, when you counseling, when you praying together, when you talking at the church, having fellowship, a lot of growth comes from that point. 
So yeah, we can cut up mm -hmm. these dudes' sermons on Sunday. And don't get me wrong, again, for the people in the back, right? On my real life, throw your hands up. For the people in the back, right? I'm not endorsing Michael Todd or none of these dudes. What I'm saying is I'm not endorsing the dudes who are constantly attacking Michael Todd and Amiga. Because I don't mm -hmm. know where are you leading people. Do I want people to like and subscribe to our channel? Yep. But we're not leaving you with like us. It's about us. We crack jokes. We try to have fun. We try to, but we're going to remind you of Jesus. If if a channel right. is calling out people, but you watch it and you're not reminded of the Lord and you're not growing in what the Lord, how the Lord wants you to be, man, grab a couple of scissors and cut it out. That channel's not serving. <laughs> The channel's not serving. So, right. you know, but what do I know? What do I know? I still got to get this tooth fixed. You know what I'm saying? Here's a thought. Hey, fellas, should we have an opinion or call or call concern on individuals who I'm not doing life with and will never know? That's an interesting topic. Should we do that? I'm not, I'm not convinced. I don't feel the, I, I don't feel like I need to feel like that. There are times me and Strack might be like, yeah, let's talk about this. This is this is something, it's popular, people are talking about it. Let's, let's weigh it. But I don't feel the need to do that, particularly, especially on a consistent basis. I, say, I think season three, we called out John MacArthur a bit. But the main reason why, because he was basically saying stuff like, you're not a Christian if you vote Democrat. I will never make that statement. Do I think voting Democrat is a good thing? No. But I will never make the statement, you're not a Christian. I'm never going to say your eternal destination is measured by who you vote for once every four years. That is dangerous. So we were calling that stuff out. Mm -hmm. We call it out to this day. Do I think it, I think Republicans are wicked too. I'm not like, oh yeah, but you know, I just don't bang with none of them. So all I just say, um, you know, it is a tough road. I think Strack said it wisely. We're just navigating new waters. But the way we should always, what we should always be left with is, what fruit of the Spirit is this producing? <clears throat> when I watch this video, do I feel like, yeah, I, I don't like these dudes. <laughs> I hope these dudes, these dudes. Yeah, I, I mean, just to answer the question from my point of view, yeah. we should, we will have an opinion. You yeah. will. You yeah. will have an opinion, Why no matter what. The minute you're exposed to the image or exposed to the listening to the stuff, you're going to have an opinion. And, you know, if dudes are heretics and they're teaching foul, you should be concerned. Now, mm -hmm. to what extent are you concerned? What comes forth from that concern? Yeah. Um, that's, that's, where we, that's where we're at. That's where we're you at. You need five videos to express your concern or just one? I mean... I don't think, I mean, I think people who need that many videos, you just don't know how to express your concern or your motive of the concern is sus, as my kids would say. Khan, if someone hadn't listened to your music yet, what is the first track you would recommend? All of them. You know what I would say, Khan? Do this. Go on iTunes or Spotify, wherever you get your music, and look for this album. Serial Killers Smile in Pictures. All right, look for that album. That's the album you look for. Look for that album, and that'll give you a good introduction to who I am. It's a, it's an interesting concept. Serial killer smiling pictures. Look for that album. Strack, what would you recommend for you if people don't know, uh, haven't heard a lot of Strack music? Uh, just go to my Spotify and push play. Yeah, there yeah. you go. That's what I would recommend. His his hype man, capital H, capital I, capital S, and then hype man Strack. Yes, Amazon Music. I'm everywhere. That these albums are everywhere streaming. His track is everywhere streaming. Is. So yep. you can go to Amazon Music. His hype man Strack. Man, we greatly appreciate y'all. Thanks for riding with us. Yes. You know, there's a yes. lot going on. And we try to uh, yep. we try to be you know be fair, but you know this is it is what it is. This is the world we live in, and we're just trying to navigate it just like you are. So if we're helpful, thank you. Hit the like and subscribe button. You know what I'm saying. We have your mom hostage. Hit the like and subscribe button, or else, you know. But in all seriousness, 
we don't, we don't, you know, we're just trying to honor the Lord too, right? Strack and I are not in any way, shape, or form. We don't got to figure it out. What I do know is that these people don't either. <laughs> so I'm just trying to say, let's just focus on, I mean, if you're going to call it out, call it out. But I think after a while, it's like, look, man, there's tons of videos on the exposing people. How many videos do you need to make? And why do you feel like you right. need to make that video? Like, is that what the, uh, all that the Lord's really called me to? I mean, the Lord don't, and, and man, put the phone down. I don't think it's, I don't think it's legitimate. I don't think the Lord's calling a lot of us. I think our desires are calling a lot of us and we just give in to them because it's not sinful to do it. Mm -hmm. But in the immortal words of Paul, everything is beneficial, but not everything builds others up. So yeah, we, let's do it. Thanks. But we gotta be careful how we do it. Having said that, I'm Kirk Kennedy. He struck the Wolverine. We appreciate y'all. We out of here, y'all. Grace and peace.